Welcome back, everybody, to a special unboxing here on the Meeple Marathon. Um, I am pretty sure I know what this is, but I uh, can't be 100% sure. It was shipped over from Fun Again Logistics, who is a distributor and uh, used a lot in Kickstarter campaigns. So I'm pretty sure this is a Kickstarter. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but I decided to go ahead and wait to crack this bad boy open. I don't know if you can see very well, but this says 19 pounds. So it is quite a beast. We're talking Gloomhaven-esque size here. So let's just see if my suspicions are confirmed. box is huge. It barely fits up on my table here. All right, lots of plasticky stuff, and I am correct. This is my Kickstarter pledge for Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Now, I actually pledged this during Season 2, so uh, as part of pledging for Season 2, there's a couple other things in here that are extra. So this is the uh, Red Hood miniature, alternate miniature, that uh, came for free to all backers of the Season 2 campaign. This is the villain box, so all of the villain miniatures and everything for the villains is going to be in this box, and we're going to take a look at all these in closer detail here in a second. Very exciting. And way down in there is the um, Heroes box. So this is all the Batman and the good guy characters and things like that. It's kind of a twin in size and shape and everything else. The style. Oh, there's that. And then last but not least, okay. Yeah, this should be something. We'll take a look at this here in a second under a better camera. Okay, so I'm actually going to start off with um, the two pieces that are from the Season 2 campaign. I didn't do a, an all-in pledge or anything like that, but in case people are curious about what some of the Season 2 stuff looks like, they can go ahead and watch the beginning of this video and then duck out. Um, but for those of you who want to see what's in the main boxes, those are going to be coming here in just a second. So, again, this was kind of like a gift to all backers who participated in the Season 2 campaign. Uh, let's see here. So even though I mostly backed Season 1 stuff, I did pick... Um, up something that we'll see here in a second. So, uh, a special event card, and most of this stuff is in English and French. Um, that way they can sell it in Canada. I believe the company is in France. So here is just a tile. Um, this is his deactivated side, so if he's defeated, he flips over right like this. Um, but this is what you would play with him as. And then, um, <clears throat> since he has more than just one or two hit points, you would put his little token here in your villain dashboard and um, know that that's his health tracking. And then here is his uh, miniature. The other sculpt that comes in the game already has him holding like a mini gun, essentially. Um, so there you go. And uh, without being painted, hey, you can see that they've just stylized the bases a little bit. That is just a nice touch. They're not super scenic, but they're not just flat gray. But all of the um, hero miniatures are going to be blue, and all of the villain miniatures are going to be gray. So if you don't paint these up, you can easily distinguish between the two on the board. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, the number one reason why I pledged this to begin with 
was for all the miniatures. I've really gotten into mini painting lately and I love me some Batman. And so I really wanted some high end, nice quality miniatures to really take my time on and um, paint over the course of the year. So this, which is in a very plain envelope. So we will see if this truly is what I think it is. Okay, yes. All right, so we've got a few more red cubes. These essentially are the universal marker in the game, so it's always good to have those. Um, essentially what this is is a fifth player expansion. So you can see that this comes with, um, that's in French, some five player scenarios. So if you've got a larger group, um, you can actually add in additional heroes and things like that. So it essentially is not much to it. It's a fifth player board. All of these boards are the same. These actions are always the same for all characters. And you just slide in the character um, picture right here. And along with it, so it was more than just a you know set of scenarios. They sent you a few other things. Um, we've got... Azriel, who I can't remember why he's on here. Seven Recover, that's for the enemy. This is for the hero dashboard. Um, so, not really sure what that's for, but here you can see on the back of every hero card, it's gonna have a little bio in both English and French. It's gonna give you his statistics. Um, but then this picture basically just slots in right here while you're playing the game. So it goes in right there, and then you can see that it um, tells you what like your max die are for each one, what color are the dice that you're gonna roll, because you know like black dice have more hits than yellow dice, and orange dice have more hits than yellow, and things like that. So the color of the dice matters. Um, but this essentially is just a fifth player expansion um, for the game. So if I've got four other buddies that want to play, nobody has to just watch. Okay, so let me clear all this off and we will get started with the heroes. Okay, so here is our hero box. And one of the nicest things about um, this production, the production value of this game is off the charts. And one of the things I love about it is this box is essentially just a piece of art. They did not put the name of the game on it. They didn't cover it up in any way. There, this is nothing but a glorious picture that even stretches around to the sides of the box. And you can see here um, that the picture that's continuing on the side here is the villain picture. So if you actually put your villain box and your hero box side by side, um, it creates one big long panoramic picture. Um, so if you were gonna display any box on your shelf, um, this is an excellent choice. All right. So with the box lid off, uh, the first thing we're greeted with is a um, piece of artwork. And this is a real piece of artwork. This is like a high grade piece of paper here. This is a nice um, hand drawn print that is basically uh, is given as a gift to all the backers from Monolith. Uh, it says artwork by Joe Lee. So there you go. We'll see if I actually get around to framing that. But it's probably not something you want to just leave in the box. All right. So two big booklets here at the top of the box. They both fit in there nicely. Rule book. Um, this rule book is not for the faint of heart. It's got some pictures in it, but there's a lot of words and it is very thick. I mean, this is like... A miniature textbook almost this could be a hardcover just about it is 59 so essentially 60 pages and looks like yeah getting to page 46 uh, so the last 15 pages are skills so this is like reference sheets now I have heard that BGG has a 
uh, single page reference sheet that it works wonders while you're playing to have out makes it real quick to look up like what berserk is what burst is what bodyguard is and it all fits on one sheet as opposed to flipping through 15 pages of this so um but here you can see some of these have um some pretty big pictures on them so it's not going to be a full 46 pages but there is a lot of rules here to go over but from what i understand um the first person that reads through them is gonna it's gonna take a long time and then after that uh, it's pretty easy to to teach someone who just needs to come in and control their character um, so there's the rule book and then here is the mission book which let's take a look at the back here there's a couple pages of how to read the maps um, but then we're looking at 54 pages of scenarios and all the scenarios are condensed onto just two pages so um well maybe not completely so you're looking at like 25 26 scenarios i thought most of them fit on two pages essentially what you have is you have um the map tiles and this is telling you where each character each miniature is going to start along with several tokens here is the end game and victory conditions for both the uh, villains and the good guys this tells you who you can choose in each game so for example this uh the heroes can either be gordon red hood ezreal or green arrow it's got to be one of those three and then it's got to be bullock and montoya so you could go with gordon bullock and montoya but if you really fancied one of these two guys you could go with them instead and then the villain this is their setup uh for their board which we'll talk about here in a second but you'd have to put it in this order it tells you how many cubes you're going to start with in each spot and and these the rest of these are essentially special rules for the scenario so most of the time it is all compacted onto just two sheets um, open face there which is nice so there's the mission book as of right now out of the box this game is not meant to be soloed uh, you need someone to be playing the heroes and you need someone to be playing the villains i have heard that there is an individual who created an ai kind of deck of cards so an ai system to help control the villain so at some point or other we probably will take a look at that on the channel um it's whether or not i want to paint up some of these miniatures first so let's take a look at what else is here we've got lots of dice and you can see for example the black dice have these mega four hit sides um on at least two of them uh, whereas the red dice look to be only yeah the best you can get is three so you know the the color of the dice matter but essentially everything uses these same dice and a success is a success is a success that's what these little starburst symbols represent um they just represent successes so put those back in the box um this to be looks like a huge deck of equipment cards i think that's all they are we'll see how long the video goes i may get into these further but I don't think that's why you guys are here. Uh, again, a whole bunch of universal markers. So it is nice that it's very straightforward, the game in general. You've got essentially one set of dice. There's various colors, but you don't have like defense dice and attack dice and range dice and things like that. And then you've got universal markers that cover everything. So here you can see what's in our box here. Um, you know, some Kickstarter stretch goals like Bat Cow is in here um there's various different robins the tim drake and the damian wayne there's uh, the caveman batman regular batman batman the dark knight returns uh batman zero years so it looks like one two three four different batmen in here nightwing who i always considered to be a robin type character and then several other guys who are lesser known but i mean there's catwoman in here Two different versions of Catwoman. So let's take a look at them. Okay, so right off the bat, we have all of our kind of NPC and standby characters. We have what looks like two different versions of bystanders. These guys are neutral orange because they are not ever going to take sides they're just going to get in the way and be cannon fodder for the villains 
So pretty straightforward here. You can see though, even their bases, if you can see that, um, have a little bit of texture to them. It's like they're standing on an old sidewalk or something. Uh, let's see here, you've got some guards, some SWAT. So let's take a look at these three guys. So this guy's got the gun. This guy appears to be bomb squad of some sort. And then this guy's just got his batons. He's looks more like a prison guard than SWAT. And there's the back side of this guy. So a whole bunch of these guys. Then we have oh. then we have some drones. So these are meant to be flying, so they're just up on a little pedestal. But there's the drones, and even these, the bases, have some texture to them, which is nice. Um, more bomb squad, and then it looks just like two more police officers. So, guy with a gun, and a guy with a gun, and a baton. So these guys are pretty straightforward. Got a bunch of them. All right. Then down below, oops, I pulled up both sets. Put that off inside. All right, this is all the fun stuff. Um, right off the bat here, looks like we've got some bigger bases um, for guys like this. I believe he was Batman the Dark Knight Returns. He's like a big, beefy Batman there with an exceptional base that we can add him to after he gets painted. Now let's see, who else is missing a base here? I'll have to figure out how that went back in the box. Um, oh, I guess I could just pick one or the other. Okay, yeah. That's essentially just a less intense version of this one, so. I'm not sure how that was back in there. I'll have to go back and look at the video. All right, so let's just take a look at everybody in the box here. First, we have Catwoman. I would say this is probably the more traditional Catwoman. And then this one looks kind of fancier. She looks like she is more in like a bionic suit or something. She looks a lot more muscular. Super detailed. These aren't like big chunky miniatures. Um, so they're very like realistic looking in there. Um, let's see, I believe this is Orphan maybe. And either Batgirl or Batwoman. Great poses though on these. Lots of flair with the capes. Okay, so we already took a quick look at Batman Returns. But you can see there, he's just got this big old cape that's just flaring, flaring off to the side. This setup creates a really nice way to store your miniatures. Um, but if I guess if you attach the base to that one Batman, he's not gonna fit back in this box. So huge cape for the standard Batman there. And then Bat Cow, not to be outdone. Um, I'm not really familiar with Bat Cow or where he comes into the Batman lore, but he's gonna be fun to paint. Fun to just have on hand, play a scenario or two with. All right, so again, not super familiar with who all, I think this is Bat Woman. Here and the other one was Batgirl. And I am honestly not sure who this person is. Hmm. Some dynamic nunchucks going on here. I believe that's Katana on the right. And 
Maybe this is Orphan. Actually, I think this might be Orphan. Not really sure who this is. Toting a gun. Looking like they fell out of the 80s. Guess I could look at the box real quick. The box lid will tell us. Uh, Catwoman, Batgirl, Batwoman. No, these aren't in the same order. Huntress had the little horns. Spoiler. Orphan. We were correct about that. Hmm. Bluebird. Okay. So that must be Bluebird with the gun. This must be Montoya. Here, because she's basically dressed in regular street clothes. Along with Harvey Bullock. And then let's throw up Jim Gordon there. To go along with Harvey. So I like Jim's sunglasses. Very cool looking. I wear my sunglasses at night. I mean, does Batman ever do anything during the day? So why does Jim Gordon have on sunglasses? This is a great question. Okay. So here we have uh, Azrael. I'm wondering if maybe his previous card was a misprint. Um, and there's Batman. I believe that's Batman. First Batman. Yeah, because that doesn't look like Caveman Batman. Here is the Green Arrow. He's one of my... Um, one of the more classic characters, in my opinion. I really liked him. I was always a Robin fan, actually. More, I was more partial to Robin than um, Batman himself. I guess I just identified with the kid... The scrappy kid. So there's the Tim Drake Robin. And this should be... Yeah, so this is... I don't know if you can see it, but he's got, like, teeth. Um, this is year zero Batman, so... I guess when there's been Batmans around for ages. Here is Nightwing, and then the Damian Wayne Robin... So Nightwing's right here. Never had a cape. And then the slightly more grown-up Robin. And then last but not least. Oh, I forget his name. Now he's yellow, I remember that. And Red Hood with his giant machine gun. So we got us a different Red Hood who's just carrying two pistols there. But... Um, all right, so that is all of the hero miniatures. Now the box is, we're not completely done with the box here. Because at the bottom here, we have a whole bunch of other stuff. All right. All right, so you've got your player boards. So this box comes with just three. So three player boards because the fourth one is always going to be the villain. So I added a fourth player board which gives me a fifth player expansion. And then here are all of the um, hero boards that you're going to slot into the middle there. So we'll just go over these real quick. Um, again, this gives you the die you can roll. And when they're slotted in here like this, um, you're going to have the universal markers here. And you move them into these cutout, circular cutouts here to say, all right, I'm going to do a melee attack. When After you use them here at the end of your turn, they're going to go here into the exhausted pile. And if you get wounded, they get all the way over here. Now at the end of every, or at the beginning of every turn, you get to move where it says here, I get to move two back. Or if I'm resting, I get to move six back. Um... And if they're in the wound column, they go from the wound to here. So at any point you empty your exhausted pool, you would start then shifting over your wounds. So that's essentially how the life and energy system works in this game. Again, all done with those red universal markers. So you can see here that you would throw cubes here if you want to defend, and you can get up to five dice at one time, and you're rolling yellows. Um, here you can do re-rolls up to four at a time. Here's melee, where you can do a max of three, and they're red. Um, 
and these other ones are like how you defuse bombs this is ranged attacks things like that so that's essentially how the player boards work in a nutshell so every uh, hero has one of these cards these other symbols on here tell you things like um oh again this is where all the iconography comes from so it's just basically an icon and a symbol i know this is like jump boots and shock boots so he can leap up onto ledges and jump down from ledges without hurting himself things like that um but we're just going to go through these real quick there's tim drake robin did i get them confused i guess tim drake's the older one there's huntress okay batgirl does have the helmet essentially bluebird has the funky visors black canary at the nunchucks. There's Montoya. Harvey Bullock looks very sad in that picture. Batwoman, yeah, does not have the helmet per se, just the mask. The orphan. Okay, Damien, I switched him up. Damien Wayne is the kid one, and Tim Drake's the teenager. Okay, Azrael. Batman Zero Year. Okay, then Batman Year 100. Okay, interesting. Batman Year 100 is the kind of vampire batman caveman batman batman the dark knight returns is the big beefy one katana red hood catwoman the long halloween duke that was the one i couldn't remember duke green arrow spoiler and bat cow all right and then last but not least is a whole bunch of boards and you can see here that there's looks like two huge boards so we'll see if we can get one of these out here now without making a huge mess yeah this is massive Okay, so this is essentially a, it's just a two, uh, four fold board or whatnot. I forget what those are called, but it only has four folds in it compared to six. But compared to like the Robinson Crusoe board, uh, it's bigger than the Robinson Crusoe board, which is, is has six folds in it. But you can see that like each space has these uh, size limits of the characters. So like this space, which is smaller, has a four. And this space has an eight because that's because you can only fit but so many people on this side of the truck pinned up against the wall. Um, and people like Clayface or the huge characters are going to take up, you know, they're going to be like a two or a three. I think Batman's even a two. So only but so many people can fit in here. You can't just dog pile. This isn't like Zombicide where there's so many miniatures in one spot that they're like overflowing outside the lines. Um, these icons here. Uh, help give you line of sight so you can see there's a dot here with E that means if we find E which is up here so you're if you're up here on this roof you can see the D B E and H um, you can also see places that don't have an obstruction um, but you know for example this truck is considered an obstruction so if you're right here you can't see anybody because you're hiding behind the truck but if you're on top of the truck um, you know or if you're on top of this truck things like that so or for example if you're right here you can't see through this stuff to here but you can if you're way up here on the roof because you're looking down so these little letters and these icons tell you uh, essentially line of sight and then for the most part there's mostly just white lines here occasionally you're going to see red and orange lines which mean certain things but Again, that's when you look at the scenario to see what the specific rules are for each map on that given scenario. So I'm not going to get both of them out because they are just so big. I'm just going to go ahead and flip over this other one so you can see uh, this is like a subway terminal. So here's a subway and you can see here, here's the orange lines. Um, they mean different things versus the white lines, but... Um, you know, this is like treacherous terrain here, so it takes extra movement to get across the rubble there. Um, you know, no one can see into the subway cars, things like that. So, you know, up above the subway car, you see various buildings, but the 
artwork on here is incredible. Um, these rooms look 3D just by looking at them. It's very, you know, realistic comic book style art, which is beautiful. Um, and the icons aren't too bad. You know, if you step away from all this, they kind of fade away. So, but they are necessary. But so there you have it. This is everything in the hero box. And I'm going to get all this cleaned up here. And we're going to take a look at the villain box next. Okay, so here we have the villain box. Again, just as beautiful as the hero box. But of course, the artwork is more centered around the villains. And I noticed on the back of this box that it told it, it gives you the contents on the back of the box. It's you know, very simplized. But it said that this box had 109 miniatures in it. Uh, for comparison's sake, the box that we just looked at had 57. So we're talking about almost twice as many miniatures here in this box. So let's get to it. Oy. Okay, so the very first thing we see is the, the Villains Command Board, Dashboard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's see if we can get this out of the plastic so it's not as much of a glare. Now, um, what essentially you are seeing is where these tokens here, like you saw we got one for Red Hood earlier, and this warning symbol here, and this one. Now obviously you would have more, you usually have like, you know, at least six or seven, but these shift down the river as it's called. And this one is representative of the unique actions that are specific to each scenario. So it always just says warning, but essentially what you're doing as the villain is spending those same red cubes as the hero spent, but you're spending them based on where these guys are in the river. So say I wanted to um, activate Azrael and he's not at the end of the river, I can activate him. I'm just paying more for him. I'm paying three. If Azrael was way back here, I can pay for him as long as I have seven cubes here to shift over and, and activate him. But then as soon as you do activate someone, you can see that this river is built. So you just kind of you stick these guys at the end and everybody pushes down. So if you wait, you can essentially just activate people as they're super cheap. Um, you have a pool just like the heroes do and it's based on the scenario and you will get some back between each round. Essentially what these other spots are going to be for is if you want to defend your units when they're being attacked or do you want to spend for rerolls or do you want to spend for extra movement. But you can see that there's only going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I think it's extra movement, I think it's defense, and I think it's rerolls. So you can only put up to three cubes in here between your turn and the, I guess you can't do movement on, on the opponent's turn, but here you can, um, you know, so if, if you fill up these right here, say you fill up all the rerolls on your turn, then when it comes time for you to defend, you won't have any slots open to spend rerolls on your defense dice. So think of it like that. Um, and then these individual spots here are where you would put where my little red hood token. So you'd put his little token there, and then you can see these are just descending numbers here. So this is where a universal cube goes, and this tracks his specific health because he's gonna have more than just one or two health. So to be able to keep track of it, that's where you would put it. All of this stuff just pops out super nice out of this board. This board is, you know, like nice, heavy plastic. It's solid. Um, and what you can also purchase from Monolith is what's called a Versus expansion, which essentially gives you another board here, but also gives you a whole bunch of cards like this that are all in blue for the hero characters. But then essentially what you're doing is you're creating two sets of essentially the villain dashboards, but you can mix and match. So you could put Batman and Joker on the same team and, um, I believe everybody's got like a point value somewhere. I'm not sure which one of these numbers it is, but you essentially say, all right, I'm gonna, we're gonna play and build an army of 
30 points. We'll say Batman is 10 and Joker is eight and Red Hood is five. So you build up and you might have to put some little minions in there to round out your 30. But essentially you have your board like this and the other player that you're facing off is just a 1v1 style of game has their board. And you're doing it all the way the villain does it with essentially just taking out the amount of cubes you want to spend for the river and then activating that character and everything they can do. So it's just a different way to play versus the kind of scenario-based story-driven campaign that Monolith has created for you. So we'll put that off to the side. And I don't know if you remember, but the other box had like the item cards and the dice and everything up here. And so their miniatures box wasn't quite as big. This one is essentially taking up the entire box here. Um, so we've got some carnivorous plants. We've got the Riddler's Gang. Looms Gang, Brutes, Riddler's Gang again, two different types, uh, one with Vatama, one with Handgun, Prisoners. So these are all a whole bunch of like minions, I would call them. And then we're going to Clayface, Solomon Grundy, Killer, two different versions of Killer Croc, Tusks, Man Bat, I know is a huge one, Mr. Bloom, Bane, Venom Injected. So let's just take a look at everything we got here. All right, so here you can see at the top, um, peeking down below, protected by this plastic, is big miniatures. We'll take a look at them in a second. But these are the minions. So, for example, Poison Ivy has her carnivorous plants she can bring out at you. Um, goes like that, I think. Uh, let's see, where's our two Riddler gangs? No, nope, these are the owls. So you can see these guys are faceless. Those are the owls. Um, I guess, okay, here's a regular, both the regular gang. One with a baton and one with a handgun. So there's those guys. Um, you know, these are all essentially, here's just the brawler. A uh, guy with a gun, another owl, I believe, with a bigger gun than the other one. Um, big guy with a little ponytail. So a whole bunch. Guy with a crowbar. Uh, who else is unique in here? This is like one of the Mr. Bloom minions. So they're all lanky, scary looking ghostly guys. Okay, so there's all the minions. Nice little way for me to grab. Oh, but I pulled up both of them again. So we'll set that off to the side. Ooh, what is this? It says glue the net down. All right. Okay, so these guys here each come with a net tucked away. Again, the question is whether or not um, these will fit back in the box if I glue these down. So, but that is pretty cool. That's a very cool miniature, very dynamic. Um, so I wonder, I'm guessing those are some more minions. Yeah, because these are more owls, minions with katanas. Here's the owls with the double guns. Okay, let's see here. Who we got here? Poison Ivy. So she's pretty dynamic. And who do I want? Where is Harley? Where's Harley Quinn? Okay, I think we should have two Harley Quinns, but here's one of them. So she's got a bigger old oversized gun. And then here are the dogs that came with her upgrade. Joker's dogs. And I'm pretty sure there's a version of Harley in here with a big sledgehammer. 
but I don't see it. Um, here is one of the better cooler modules, Scarecrow, with his smoke wafting up from him. And then there should be just a kind of a regular, oh, here's Harley Quinn. This is the one that goes with the dogs. This is more Suicide Squad, Harley, Birds of Prey, Harley. Um, here's the other Scarecrow. He's also cool. Looks like his thing got a little bit bent there. But we could probably fix that. That's okay. Um, this would be regular Bane. Still pretty buff, but this is not injected crazy steroid Bane. So this is just kind of standard Bane. Um, this is Red Hood. Can't remember how they all fit in, but this is the Red Hood bad guy. All right, who else can we show off here? Um, Mr. Freeze. Not quite Arnold Schwarzenegger big there. Let's see, here is the Joker with his long pistol. That's a very classic looking Joker there. Let's do a couple here. We've got the Two-Face and the Riddler now. Be cool if Two-Face made him more like he was flipping his coin. Like mid-flip action now. He's just kind of holding it up there. Um, here we go. Penguin. Little short guy. He's cool. Oh, uh, who else? Uh, Raza Ghoul. Not made out to look like Liam Neeson. This is another really cool one here. Firefly. Just, it looks like he's taking off and flying away. All right, so that covers most of these. Um, you know, you, you can see most of them from there. I don't really know who this guy is. Looks like the mummy guy from Dick Tracy. Let's take a look at these bad boys. These are gonna be fun to paint. All right. Right off the bat here, we have got, I guess we'll start with this guy. Uh, Tusks or Tusker or whatever his name is. Just a big ugly guy, reminds me of Rhino from Marvel. Very heavy, fat miniature here, just for some size and scale. Here is the Joker, compared to some of these bigger miniatures, so. They are much more present. All right, here is steroid-induced Bane. So you can see much bigger than regular Bane. beefier enraged Oops. venom and venom raging here it's clayface that's a cool miniature uh, Solomon Kane I believe Kind of looks like the Incredible Hulk. Oh, let's see here. We've got two different versions of Killer Croc. sure if you this guy I'm worried about breaking this guy mr. bloom is very thin here super long creepy fingers 
I don't, I don't, I'm not really 100% sure who this guy is. And then, last but not least, we've got the big sucker. At least the biggest one as far as these two boxes are concerned. Man Bat. Da -da -da. I mean, this is quite a large miniature. You can see it's basically like the width of my hand, you know, fingertip to back of my palm there. Big, creepy looking dude. It's a really nice texture on the wings. All right, so there you have it. Let's, um, I believe we should be able to see one more thing here if we can get this box out of here without wreaking havoc. Yes. Okay, so this is essentially all of the tokens in the game. A lot of these are gonna be you know, go on the map tiles. Um, some will be slotted into the um, the villain dashboard. Ooh. All right. So I'm gonna spin this around like that so that we can do that. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure what all of this means. Um, I know that, um, I believe you can get upgrades for some of these, like the bombs and the computer terminals and stuff to get them as real miniatures. I don't think I have those, but that's okay. Oh, some stuff fell out. Um, gosh, it's gonna, they're really gonna make me do this. Make me keep switching here. All right, so this is essentially everybody we just covered, um, you know, in their tile format. So. We have some additional guys here for SWAT and the citizens. Over here you can see all the little circular face icons for everybody. These things are just popping right out of here. Uh, Killer Moth, Deadshot, Deathstroke. There's one Bane, Dr. Death. Okay, that's who we were looking at and I wasn't sure of. The Rat Catcher. There's the penguin, one of the killer crocs. Here is uh, Joker's dogs, which technically take up two slots. So I'm not really sure whether you have to pay double for them. Do you have to pay for the higher one? Um, these are the type of pieces that are gonna go into your villain dashboard. And that's it. Uh, we got back around to the other one. So that is everything there is in the base game. Um, and I covered at the beginning of the video the fifth pillar expansion and the Red Hood miniature that I received as part of the Season 2 campaign. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, again, I'm probably going to start by just painting up some of these. Maybe I will go ahead and paint up the first scenario characters and then give them a go with the solo AI. Uh, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel um, or just simply leave a comment. I'm always open to suggestions and if somebody asks for a specific video, as long as I have the game available um, or the means to do it, I will do my best to get it up on YouTube for you. So once again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.